is across the rest of the county. Oh, yeah, which right. is quite useful for us just to have an idea of what's going on in the county. Um, the other thing is, I think it's important that we all just have a quick discussion about how we feel the proposed level of um, rates increase. We'll, the team will come back to us this morning is 11.57%. Um, everything that we've discussed and every decision that we make as a council from here will have an impact on that up or down or whatever um, sideways. So I think it's important that we just have a quick uh, discussion around how we're feeling about that level. And please don't tell me it's horrible and we're not happy because we all kind of know the facts. But, uh, where, where do we go from here? Um, please do. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of what some of the other rate increases are around the uh, around the, uh, the most of the quite substantial in these hours. I um I know that it's, um, there's some hard stuff in here. I appreciate it. Stuff is, but for us as councillors, it comes down to uh, the, um, the work the staff has done, and we're getting a big point of risk. Or we start playing with it, and I disagree with what Lynn says. It won't come down in favour of it, go up. So, um, whatever we do uh, is going to push up past the 25 percent which I think is high enough. So, I myself sit here and go with the star, with the big H plan, and say, it's the way it is. I'd like to go around the table real quick if that's okay. So, awesome. You said it's after your name. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, yeah. I, I don't think anybody's going to be happy at all with any of these rates because I, you know, want to acknowledge that even though 11.6 is the average, you know, the average means that some are above and some are below. So, <clears throat> that's not the, the number that my ratepayers will pay. But, you know, we are elected to make tough decisions and we're elected to do what's best for our communities. And some of the things that we need to um, talk about are going to cost us a little bit more because they will address the real issues in our community and we just got to swallow that. And that's really hard. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, are you talking about getting sort of really specific in this or just the general? No, I just, I just wanted to. Okay. Um, yeah, so certainly for Thames, there are some, um, yeah, immediate pressing issues for Thames and, yeah, as Thames councillors, we are going to have to um, push for those. So, um, yeah, I can't support it as it currently is. I do want to make changes. Whilst I agree with what Robbie said so eloquently, um, the fact that Mercury Bay is you know, sitting at 40 and 28 percent is is just really, really tough. Understanding, as Bruce said, you know, we've got a lot of that storm damage and stuff happening over on that eastern seashore, but I'd love to find a way to bring that 14.28 down because I think that's that's a really big hit on a badly affected community and economy over there. Um, respect the work that the staff have done, and I know that it's, it's been a really tough job for you guys, but I just don't see how I can sell 14.28 to my community. Um, well, I'll start by um, thanking you very much for the efforts of the staff that have uh, gone into this. I really appreciate just how much work that is taking place. Um, and particularly um, what is obvious is the burning of midnight oil over the last um, 48 hours of, uh, of effort as well. So I uh, really, really appreciate you know, the effort that has, uh, that has taken place. Um, I'm uncomfortable at 14.28 for Mercury Bay. I'm um, appreciative of the effort that we've got to as in there. Um, so I'm, yeah, I, I guess that's sort of, okay. 
Um, can I use a whiteboard? Uh, oh, cool. Oh. So, um, not. So, I don't know, I'll just, just whiteboard will be fine. Um, so, when we originally ran around this at 7.7, 7. 7. 7, and we had our first meeting, I think, um, uh, I think we were all gutted and disappointed that we were looking at a figure at that stage of um, whatever it was. And we had a meet, had that meeting, and I was really keen that we could get to a point below ten percent. I think as time has gone on, I um, I have accepted that that we're not going to get to a figure below ten percent. I'm really glad that when we went out to consultation, we went out with the table on page eight so that we were really talking about 11.4%, but we're actually talking to Thames people about 137 Um, I think that was really important that we 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 got in that way. What I am thinking now is that um this, this is not going to be good news to anybody because it's not 7.7, .7, it's not below 10, and we're not going to get it below 10. I think there's just a reality and pragmatism about that. But I, I came in here knowing that we had gone out with 11.4%. 11 11.4% plus a question mark. Right? So we've consolidated people at 11.4% plus a question mark. We don't know what the question mark is. We've now had all those submissions. And in my ideal world, I'd like to think that now 11.4% has come down to 10 point something percent. In other words, as a result of consultation and everything, we've you know, gone through that. And we now know what the value of the question mark is. Whatever that might be, let's say it's 2%. And for us to be thinking and positioning that what we've consulted on, we've worked hard at. And let's not forget that in the first, first round in here, we went through a whole lot of things line by line. We took this out, took that out, what, what have you. I'm sure to think we're actually going to have to do all that. But there are some guidelines that we get. And what does that look like? And what is this question mark? So to actually look it out of our rate increase, which is not going to be, you know, seven point seven. Look at it as, hey, this is what we consulted on. This is all this and that. We've now come to this level, you know, because of all these guys have done. But we actually now have to add that. So it's clearly understood that the question mark is the part that's playing. So that's kind of where I would like to get to. I would love the Thames, where we went at thirteen point seven, if we came, if it came in. Below 13, you know, in other words, the 11 to 4 drops down to whatever, but then, you know, whatever the result of the recovery stuff is, that's my hope. Thank you, Peter. Okay. I'll just use my PowerPoint presentation to start. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I've got to start by absolutely thanking staff. Like, this has been, I, absolutely can appreciate the pressure and um, thank them for the amount of hours in the in the late nights to get to this. It, it's not a nice story. I like to refer to the, the BH as, excuse my language, bloody hell. Um, this is, it's going to be a hard pill for my our communities all across the board to swallow and like Mars and I, I'd like to get down into some of the detail and see if we can move a few things. I'm really keen, and I think the one thing that we should all understand is events have a massive positive impact on our communities, and I know we have taken that money out, but I would really like to have a conversation about how we can support events for this district because it's so needed at this time. Uh, yeah, and again, acknowledge of staff's work on this, and there's a lot of options here, and uh, and this is a sort of, um, as Hayden said, a representation of somebody's rates, not everybody's, that all changes. 
Uh, but I just really want to reflect on the uh, the consultation of communities coming through. Uh, we've got 65% of Hong Kong most probably paid these no troubles, paying fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars now. But we have got a four thousand people who will find it difficult. And when you take out a lot of the projects that are planned of their expectations to come to fund a rating here, they'll be looking for some small contributions around the benefits we can give with grants and um, falls and things like that that came through quite strongly. So I'll be I'm not worried about the 11 percent because that is what it is, and it goes up a little bit on a local rate. And I, I think we can handle it if we've got something tangible to offer. So yeah, so we'll continue the discussion and um, and hopefully we come to a conclusion that's acceptable. Thank you, Terry. Gary, are you here? Is yes, I can hear you. What I'm I, I did mention I, I might send an email, but I have to say to the staff thank you and Donna has been always responds very promptly and I will send you uh, an email she sent me this morning in response to a question and I suppose the thing that um, uh, what the, what the what that, that question was uh, how much would it add to the rates if you were increasing it by fifty dollars and she said paying someone paying three thousand two hundred a year rates that would be 1.5% on the rates. And I'm just giving you that as an example because there's talk of the the waste uh, going up 5.5%, then that would be an average of $175 an annum. And the reason I raise that is the survey questionnaire that went out to people to respond to, would you be prepared to pay $50, $100 more? Um, there was a fight between, uh, I think it just there was slightly more saying no, there were, there was about slight uh, same about for saying fifty dollars and very few for a hundred dollars. So we we we've really got to think very carefully about it's going to in real terms cost people one hundred and seventy five. I can tell you that because I have a lot of people as I'm an absentee, uh, they say, look, why the hell are we having these green bins? Uh, it seems nonsensical. And one of one of the one of the absentee owners who owns a property in Awakuni said, "We bought it in there, and I didn't know what to do with the green bin, and I was taking it to the tip, and I saw hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of green bins just sitting in the uh, in the tip because they have absentee owners, and I, I just think we need to think this through a little more, and that's why I've been asking." Have we signed this contract? And it appears we may, may, maybe have not, because we need to rethink uh, that aspect because the locals are going, we could do our own composting. I know a lot of absentee take their waste back to Auckland or, or Hamilton and compost them there. So uh, it, it really seems to be, that's just one example uh, when we've had people do a consultation and they're given an expectation $50 or thereabouts, and it's going to be considerably more than that. Um, I can tell you that the absentee owners can afford it, but it's the people who are permanent and are based there that I'm sorry for on fixed incomes or pensions and whatever, this is really going to hit them. I've got a few other little comments. I will send an email to all councillors and staff just sending out a few ideas, and uh, it's for you to consider. Um, I, I think it's probably easier if I do that. But uh, I, I really think we have to take it uh, really in the consultation process has really shown a lot of concern by ratepayers and understandably. So um, that, that's my two penneth worth at this stage. Thank you, Gary. Yes, please. So the clarification on the waste contract, so the, the change to the new contractor is locked and loaded. That's been a three year process that was signed off in the last September. And the letter of the award of contract is sent within that in September last year. What is happening in, in the current week is that the very final 400 page contract has been signed by council and it's circulating the other parties for their signature. So it's locked and loaded. The thing, the thing we're consulting on in this process is actually about how to pay for the Wellington option. That's that's it. It's ring fenced to that issue. Everything else is already locked and loaded, um, and basically from the previous council um, and signed off last September. So, so, sorry, I just missed that word. It's ring fenced for what did you say, uh, Aileen? 
Oh, sorry, the consultation process that we've just been through is ring fenced solely to how did they pay for the wedding bin? The how part of it. Not, not the, the zero wedding bin. That is how to pay for the wedding bin. So, so there's, you're really saying that we can't adjust uh, the four bin process that has been put out to people? Yeah, that's correct. That was, that was an LTP process. That was signed off, Gary, before yeah. the, um, this current term and this current council took office. And I suppose yeah. if you think about it, the only thing we ever asked at the time was what was the rate of impact? Well, I'll send my I'll send my email just for for yeah, uh, council and others to reflect on. Thank you. So I have a couple of comments or questions that I'd like to throw into the mix. One is the um, with the consultation process. There were a couple of things out of that. One is how you feel for when we consult with the public. How do you feel about uh, the proposed rates increase of eleven point? Um, and the other thing that we consulted on, uh, apart from the user thing, is um, we wanted general feedback on the levels of service and the facilities that council are responsible for and that we provide. Um, so that's something that I think we all need to be mindful of, is finding that balance between what we're delivering to people and what their expectations are and what the uh, level of comfort is in terms of the cost of paying for those levels of service and included in those levels of service the rehabilitation from storm effects as has been well done well discussed so there's it's just finding that balance between what are we delivering as a council what are our um what are our communities expectations in service and amenities and what is the appetite for how much they actually pay for that. Um, just keep that balance between cost and services. Thank you. Um, all right. Can I just we'll move, yes, sure. ask a question of Aileen in regard to the comments that you made a few minutes ago, and it was to do with the costs of the bins. Um, is there an opportunity that they can be restructured? Uh, not a simple option. Not, not an option to sit here and decide today. Um, we probably need to come back to you with a bit more detail about that. It won't be simple. It's probably my on the hoof answer. How, how the costs um, is, is something to consider for our long term plan. If we were going to change our rating model, how much is the funding of those costs for the first collection? I know that Mo and the team are keen to um, keep a very close eye on how how it goes over the 12 months, and then they can reconsider to ensure it's best fit for the stretch. Yeah. Do you think through that? No, the other thing I'm saying, I'm not sure you can bring us down to the details. I'm waiting for the public that the increases in the sideways contract is not all because of the free ways community. There's lots of challenges and a lot of cost escalations across the industry, a lot of um, government waste levies, and so yes, everything's a lot up. So it's not like we need to be like, okay, let's revisit that. We're not going to do free waste with that little group. It's not going to bring everything out of the other. That's just not going to happen. So it's a it's a portion of the increase, but it's not a hard increase. And we really need to be able to tell our community that, really break that down and sort of say, is this chunk that is out of our control? And I, I think that is really going to help help. That narrative that yeah, we need yeah. to have that right there. And just some feedback for our comms team. A friend of mine went in to pay her rates and got a little flyer explaining the whole new waste, and she was very excited. And so that little info thingy that's out there is very helpful and digestible, but there's another side that we need to tell alongside of this. Just at the moment, we can just talk about the waste. just a brief question or two. Come up several times is, is it an even only waste bin? Does it go to the rural as well? It goes to the rural. Right, so it's across every cross every side of So, can I just make a suggestion? I was a whole lot of detail with the final two here, and it's actually really interesting. Um, but I'm just wondering if we should get um, Bruce and the team to come and talk to council separately on the whole um, waste um, yeah. 
because we, we've got a, a switch to the new contract for a whole new system. So why don't we have discussion at another time about the detail of the latest contract? I think we need to. There's a lot of concern in the community about it. And, and, and if that includes the the um, the way we deliver the message and the opportunities as well, because I'm really mindful of the opportunities for us as communities to save some cost. Just for why the federal council move for that to the home, you know, the gate as well. So yeah, we we just to like improve that for sure. We're all comfortable with that. Having a workshop. Yeah, so something nice. Thank you. All right. All right, so we move on. Let's operation. I need to have a full screen. Yeah, I'm just taking the screen by share it first before I expand it to full yeah. screen. Yes. Okay, so Luna driving. Oh, well, sorry, Kate. It's okay. Uh, Gary won't be able to see that. Oh, Thanks. Great uh, works program. Perhaps we could, we can either tick off some or just hone in on those that we need to discuss further. Any questions? Sorry, questions on the chat. I think so. Let's start with Delhi and then come to. Um, some of some of those would be not negotiable. So I'm just looking at council overheads and just wondering, you know, like we could all sit there and go, oh my God, you know, the council's got too many overheads. But they are a, a reality and a cost that mm -hmm. our opinions may not be able to. Uh, yeah. So just yeah. a little reminder, these are um, these bullet points are all items that have seen reductions. Um, there was a bit of more detail in the consultation document, um, but they all propose certain amount of deductions which are own deductions which are identified by staff that we have a little commitment that we can get through with those. And being obvious to have a particular impact on the rate of increase as well. Um, sorry. Just just want to make a point so we can ask you when you want to put staff back in, which then pops away as well. Strong staff recommendation is that the funding plan would actually need to be one of our renewals. That's the prudent thing to do. It's not a political thing to do, but it's the prudent financial thing to do. So that's, yeah, there's just a risk we put some stuff back in that's pulled on this book. It actually leaves off the uh, out where we take the digital growth. Okay, yeah, so, um, so I'm just raising the issues that were brought for the community board from and the community. And that is the discretion to feasible grants and the retained earnings. So we've got issues that we we would like to see that money available which around the fact that we've got a um, an information centre for the fund and a business form for the fund, and we're looking for some of that retained earnings to help that, and the discretionary grants to help the people through. We've got a lot of we've got over a hundred um, community groups in Fong Mata. And a lot of them do need help, the whole volunteer run. So that to us is a really important grant to keep those um, groups active and available and not see them fail. So those two issues came very strongly to the community board, both community boards, and I'd like to meet. And we're prepared to take a hit on a local rate if that's the way that it works. Can I just ask, um, just to create a things back. If, if a uh, is has put their hand up and said, look, this is what we want, and uh, we are, we're prepared to accept the time and rate for that, how do we address that, that question? It's always been like that. Yeah. Local rate. It's your local rate, yeah. your um, grants funds. 
I know it's probably a question for already. Well, I'm really asking how to address it in, in this decision making annual plan and board. Uh, how are we specifically address that? So, I believe so the question is that we just something to be clear. It is that the board review board's got something different. Is that what you're saying? If I, yes, so we took that down to that. So if a community board said, look, we want something different from what's proposed here, we accept that it's going to result in our rates rise, but we're prepared to accept that as a rate, a local rate for our ward, uh, so that it doesn't have an impact on the rest of the wards or the district. How do we address that specific question? Well, it still it still has an impact on the overall rates increase. It's because because when you look at the if you just take like our average rates increase, which we're talking at the moment of eleven point four percent, that will take that into account. So even though that will increase, okay, it will increase, say if it was fund in the tower, it would increase it by that amount, that still has an impact on it. The overall rates increase, so it will still. So it it's still not means just a thing. We have to go back out to the the, the Thames Coromandel district and say eleven point four is now going to be something different. So at the moment we've got fourteen in Pitianga and eleven eleven in Frogmata. Okay, so why can't we have a local in that was done before have a local rate, which is a local rate impact that only affects that ward. It, it will only affect it does so it affects so only that ward will pay for yeah. it. But if you're talking about if you put your district hat on and you're talking about yeah. at a district level, that still affects the overall district average rates increase. What's the average? No, what's the average? That's the average up. Even though you're only paying for it. Yeah, so what effect in terms of points is it be point one point two percent? Well it depends how much the, the well, we're talking about acceptable grants. What is that? Twenty grand? Sixty grand. Sixty. Yeah. Sixty. Yes. So guys, so I'm gonna ask Lorna to um to give us some group help on this because she's got some background and then uh Robin's got a question. Um just a couple of things. Um Amy referenced at the very start about using other people's money. Um, and also that we are in recovery and our district, along with some of the other affected districts, are looking, looked at more favourably right now because of the issues that we're facing. So when it comes to funding opportunities, we've got a lot more opportunities for external funding right now rather than having to look to our own, to ourselves to fund things like some sorts of grants. So a couple of examples um, with the mural uh, disaster relief fund. There is some money left in that, which um, the panel will be discussing about how that's redistributed to our community for packages of work and programs of work. There's also um, funding that we're working to support Waikato, and that will help community sport and active recreation groups. So again, there's other opportunities that don't be able to access funds that aren't our own. Um, there's also uh, funding HQ, and we can, they're going to come and bring you at some stage in the following months about funding opportunities that we're doing with arts groups. So there's, there's other ways that we're going to be able to help other groups um, get funding without just being, um, you know, an obligation on the community boards. And the other thing is that these two social navigator roles that we're uh, just employing, they are also going to be working with other agencies about collaborating to get funds through them as well. That is great. Well done. Thank you, Laura. So really what I'm hearing is that if there's a gap there, what was the number you talked about? 60 grand or something? Yeah. So if we can fill that gap so that we're not left leaving those community groups uh, in a hole, but it doesn't have an impact on the rates, is that a, is that a potential solution? No, I think it, talks, it comes on the average rate. No, no one works on the average rate at any rate, do they? Because everyone's different. So I know the average rate out there is some letters or numbers, but it actually means nothing to people when they pick up their own sheet and see what's going on. But it I, ends up on the front page of the newspaper. Yeah, that's what it does. Yes. And, and that's where you have to take that. But if there's some help that we can work through with Lorna, I'd be very appreciative to do that and have a chat about that for sure. Thank you. So uh, Robin had a question. Um, so, Well, a question for you, but a question for Kate first. So this feels very detailed. Are you comfortable to get into detail or have you still got some high-level stuff to talk about? That's the first question. 
Okay, good. That's the end. And uh, yeah, now's the time for the detail on the okay. application. Cool. So, Perfect. And then I guess the second thing is um, we haven't had, I, I was asking during the hearings how each board felt about being treated differently and got a mix of answers, but we as councillors haven't had a conversation about treating the board separately. You're talking about discretionary funds, contestable funds? Absolutely. And so we, before we get into any sort of detail, we've still got to be up in the district with our district hats on and decide how we want to treat our communities and whether we are happy and comfortable treating our communities differently whether they can pay or not. So mm -hmm. that's the, we need to have that conversation before we talk about who wants what in terms of- well, They're all different now, so. But are we gonna treat them the same? We can't, it's all different. But we're district councillors. We haven't had that conversation. Can I just, can I just okay. clarify before we go too much further? So are you talking specifically about the way that each ward manages its so, no, we're, and, and yes. uh, contestant phase? Yes. So, so yeah. we, we haven't decided if all of us are comfortable with the idea that one board might be keeping their whole funds, some will have none, some will have half, because that's treating everybody in the district differently. Mm. And I'm not too sure that I'm comfortable with the. I know some of the people on my community board are very happy with that. I'm not sure that I'd be really happy going out to my people in the, my community and saying, yeah, Fomata's got 100% of theirs because they're willing to pay for it, whereas they said, hang on, that wasn't even part of the consultation. You asked us if we wanted half. So we, that's a good point. We had that discussion. Uh, well, <laughs> remember when we were asked, Terry, you know, sorry, next, sorry, yeah, Rika. Terry, we've got other people with hands on. Responding to this. Well, um, so hey, let me just um, put, put a bit of uh, context around that. We had that discussion, and so that has been addressed, but we haven't got to the point where it's, we've got any resolution or clarity on that. Mm. We will go through in, in um, an orderly process. So I was watching mm. over here. Can I just ask? Rick, I'm I'm you system. and then Peter, and then we'll come back to Terry just to for, fill in the gaps there. Thank you. Just to respond to that, I think I, I certainly know Mercury Bay's community board put it in, as part of their submission. Mm. So all of the community boards I'm guessing will have given an indication on where they sit and they will. And so maybe that's something in the discussion that you want to have that we need to look at because the answers may already be there. Mm. Peter? Um, so. There's a whole group of people behind you. Oh. <laughs> You, you had her behind your side. Yeah. Um, sorry, um, So, <clears throat> just what I think I'm hearing is, we you know the long-term plan says that there's that the that there is three hundred twenty-one thousand allocated to the contestable and discretionary grants in the long-term plan. Option one is proposing that that gets halved unilaterally across the board. What I think I'm hearing you saying that the message to our community board is the difference between what we're putting into the annual plan and what was in the long-term plan is going to be available through other grant, through other funding mm -hmm. options. I'm, I'm saying to you that potentially I couldn't guarantee that. What I'm saying is that what we are, when we're discussing with agencies and when we're applying for funding, our districts are looked at more favourably because of the issues that we're facing right now. And so there is opportunity that we can get other external funding. And as I said, some of the, some of the funds that I've mentioned already. So Hayden, is that a high risk? <laughs> that's high risk. That's high risk. That's high risk. So there's no there's no comfort that community boards could could have that 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 those who want to keep the the level of LTP funding there's no there's no comfort for them that in fact they they could top that up. We chopped it in half. Okay. So, yeah, so probably through the chairs, it's wouldn't be about popping it up, it would be directing those groups that, were, that would normally apply through that mechanism to apply for a different mechanism, which is a mechanism mm -hmm. so one. If I can comment on the back, there's something, um, so in, in all this team with the two navigators and the new role around community development, 
And one of the things that's very apparent is we haven't been very good at partnering in the past you know, with other agencies for our outcomes. And there are a whole bunch of agencies out there doing all sorts of stuff, but partnering with them for the outcome is the same thing as spending other people's money. Can I also put that one other thing, Kate? Is that a lot of the groups that you apply for funders always come to our council? And what we're finding is that we're, if we're helping to find other funders, then they're not always having the expectation that council will fund what they're doing. So there is other actually better options for them that they're not even aware of. And that's why we've had um, a particular group that come in and showing people, giving them the tools to go and actually apply for funds through other ways. And actually, that's been better for collaboration. Um, between different, say, sporting groups or bike trail groups or arts groups, so it's become more of a collaboration um, for people around the district as well. I wonder if the Wangamata Community Board would have that view. So, Terry, and then yeah. yeah, I just want to clarify, you know, with Council Sinclair about the fact that today we're here listening to what the community said and the Community Board said in their submissions to talk about. We've done our work around the table and now we have to come back and relook at it because it's changing in terms of the projects that we thought were going to be there are changed because of circumstances that we're going to deal with. So I'm saying that these things are what they are asking for through their submissions today. And I'm pointing out the issues that are on the board that they feel strongly about. And, um, and this we should be hearing today. It's not my opinion, it's their opinion. And that's what their submissions were written about. And that's why they spent the time putting them to the table here so we could deliberate over them. Thank you, Terry. Dilly. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Sinclair, and <clears throat> I have a, a, a degree of discomfort of rating everyone who's got these contestable and discretionary funds. Personally, I'd like to see them completely gone because. We do have this opportunity to have these um, navigators who are going to support those community groups. So we've actually got something better, I think. There is a degree of risk, but I think it's a story we could sell quite well through cons to say we've removed this for this 12-month period because we know there's a lot of pain at, at the pump, pain at the, at the invoice stage of your rates. However, we have got this model where we're going to support you to find your funds from other avenues. So I respect what the various wards have um, submitted on, but we do have a district lens and we do have to make some difficult decisions. A couple of things come out of that. First of all, some of the discussion around contestable and discretionary funding and the model that we apply, and it is different per ward, mm -hmm. um, was triggered by the proposal in the annual plan consultation. And Coraline Tolvo, I think, came back with the proposal where they said, okay, if we're going to cut our discretionary, our contestable funds from 25, uh, cut them in half, 12 and a half grand, that is such a small amount, a uh, number of groups applying, it's a lot of admin, a lot of work involved in that. Why don't we get rid of it completely and keep the discretionary fund at the original level, which is effectively the same thing, but uh, it cuts out all of that admin. We're still giving away the same amount of money, but we're cutting out all that admin. So one of the questions that we've had a discussion around and raised is, would that model work with all of the community boards so that the funding level, we've still got a 50% cut, it's still the same, but we've taken out all of that admin and we've got the ability for community boards to make that decision directly without that contestable element in there, which is time consuming. And not just for community boards or staff, but also for the community groups involved. So that's one of the things that, um, that, that we point? need to probably consider as a council whether we uh, whether that's a good model and whether it would work across all of the community boards and it would basically level the playing field. Mm. Um, so applying that model. The other thing is, I think we need to be a bit careful that we've gone out for annual plan consultation and we see in the feedback from that consultation that there are a number of community groups out there who actually want us to keep supporting as a council of community boards. 
who want us to keep supporting the work that they do in the communities. We've got to be a little bit careful about deleting all of that uh, community grant funding without having a backstop, which is what Lauren was talking about. So it, it, I'm personally I'm not confident that that what Lauren is proposing is in place yet. I think we need to do a bit more work, but I would hate to see the community groups, and some of them are, are, are very small. The, the amounts of money are very small, uh, but to to take that out completely without having something in place, I think, would go against what the, the consultation process and the feedbacks that we've got from a number of these groups. Rita. And I think adding to what you said, all of the boards approach these um, contestable grants differently. So I don't know that we can will come up with one solution across what they do in Whangamata and the amount of money they have available is very different. Mercury Bay has a very, when you come once, get help, you get your, your event or whatever off the ground and then you keep some money to keep yourself going next year. Don't keep coming back. You know, we support things once oh, yes. and for the first time. So we have a very different, maybe a different approach. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that we will find a one district answer in this mm -hmm. So that, that could potentially be, and I'll be guided by by this in terms of, of um, process, that could potentially be a council uh, decision that the model that council applies to community boards um, simplifies everything and makes things more equitable. So uh, I'm not sure that I'm clear whether that should be part of this process or but whether we should as a council decide that this is a simpler more equitable model. So, but, uh, Robin and then Terry. Um, a question for Lorna. Because um, I had a conversation with Dean about the contestable grants last year about tightening up some of the criteria. And so, is that worth continuing or there was going to be some? Yes. Pri yes? Okay. Yes, you know, this is the review of the grants process. Fantastic. Okay. So, that's already happening. So, we, I don't think we need to have a conversation about the grants policy here because that's a something that's already happening in a, a different part of council to inform that equitable treatment of all of the contestable grants. Yeah, so good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just look at the uh, different boards and the people and they're like tens of $75,000 that you use. Um, so we've all got, and I think, uh, I think his title currently is about 30. So they've all built these around what they need for their own models, for their own area. So to have a district-wide approach to this is, is quite a different ballgame in my game. And Mercury Bay has chosen their way of doing it, and they fund their different way. But we're funding ours in a way that we, the local volunteer people do their job for nothing or for it, and we're just supporting them to maintain those activities. And if they don't get the money, they'll drop those activities, and you lose that community uh, empowerment and community working to group and working together as a group. So I just think there is a, a need for them if the area wants it. So, uh, Terry, thank you, and, and you really reinforce what I was saying. Yeah. That also, though, all I'm really talking about is is the model that we have. The brief. We've got contestable, we've got discretionary. Uh, is that the best working model, or is there a simpler way of doing things that? Provides the same level of support, just delivers it in a different way. Yeah, and I agree with you that maybe a one off this year that we look at that combined, what you talked about. In order to help maybe move the conversation along, do we park that broader conversation for the future? And I know there's some work being done around the grants, and potentially, like I've just been reading through what's in, it in this document today. As a, I don't know how all the councillors feel about supporting their board submissions, and I know that that will make it different. Um, but we can, you know, we can back that decision and then have a broader conversation about do we want to treat this fairly across the district or what has been in place? Does that work? I think you're right, and and so partly my fault. This is. Just taking this off sideways, and it probably means 
deeper discussion at board level and at council level to make sure that, and, and we've got this other part of the picture as Lorna was explaining. So I think we need to get back on track. Um, basically the question in front of us though, in terms of a proposed level of cuts for discretionary and contestable grants, as it sits at the moment, is the, the, the challenge in front of us. So the proposal is uh, to cut those, which has an effect on, as Terry said, um, on Ta and, and other parts of the district. Uh, we've heard from Lorna that there could be a way to fill that gap, and that gives me a lot of confidence. If we can, as a council, move on, uh, agree on that that's where we've landed and move on past that, and um, look to Lorna to uh, see what magic she can work in with her team. Are we comfortable to accept the position that's proposed and move on past that? Oh. You had there was an option that you put up about combining the two together and not having the contestable grants as a as a process to go through. That was one of the options in here. Is that up for sort of discussion? You're, you're not, Chair, I can speak to that. So basically, at an, an overall level, what what was proposed in the CD would have created a saving of 160500 The board's feedback, what they came back with, meant we would, we would only be saving 8000 8, So they came back wanting more put back into what was proposed in the CD. The combined one. The combined one. Um, the other option that you're talking about is if we if, if we put all the contestable at zero, but we put basically the, the savings that all the savings that we would that we then out from the CD, we just put the all into discretionary and then the savings would be the same. So we wouldn't have a contestable, we would just have to have it. Yeah. Same amount, just to say that it's a different way of delivering. Yeah. Right. It's an easy way of delivering. Yeah. Cheaper way. Yeah. 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 Talk about the table on page 12. Yeah, correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you and the packet. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's a question for um, council as to whether you're happy to change the model to a purely community board. Um, discretionary fund model or whether you want to retain the money's the same or whether you want to retain a split between discretionary and contestable and just bear in mind that the contestable funds will be halved and so there's small amounts of money for a lot of work and admin on, on both sides so that's the question yeah. So I support combining them together and taking away the contestable fund and just making it a fund that the community board can give out to those key outlets. So Wong and Ta, you feel, would, would support that? Did I get the Mercury Bay reading? And Tyrell Clark. And Tyrell Can we just confirm that it's page 12 of the packet and we're looking at option three in that table? Yes. My yes. thing would be that Mercury Bay could even half that discretionary amount. We had a massive conversation about what we spent previously. <clears throat> so and we wanted to take that down to 10. Jump in if I'm correct. overstepping the mark here. But with, with the option of potentially having some funding top up through Lorna's initiatives, if that's available? We, we very rarely have spent our discretionary, and we also thought that for the staff time and everything, Sitting around trying to dole out twelve thousand dollars was just nonsense. Call for one year we're talking about, so we were happy to take our discretionary just down to ten thousand. Correct me if I remember and that comment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and no two options. Option three with a reduction in yeah. discretionary. You don't have to spend the whole discretionary. No, exactly. We yeah. and we don't even have spend our whole um, contestable most yeah. times. Perfect. And we over subscribe by about fifty thousand yeah, dollars. But I see you wanting your rates to go up. We can give you a couple for seeing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do it. Give me the money as well. So we've got something to take back. Okay. And the original proposal came from <laughs> the original proposal came from Cobble Coromandel anyway, so we know that they're comfortable. Where and her. how does Tim's feel about that? Leaving the money the same but switching it down to be discretionary. I believe our community board had a 
there was a little mix around keep, keeping the full amount. Yep. Um, but yeah, ultimately we're here um, fighting and um, the could, could, that, could yeah. support that. Yeah. yeah, I would just it would just be good to make sure that we're all aware of the discretionary the policy and that around that, yeah. and making sure that if that's communicated to groups, we don't want a group saying, "Oh, they got five thousand that discretionary. We didn't even know about it." We just have to be careful that we're not and it's, well, picking just a handful and going, "Yes, them, them, them." You know the key ones. I don't know how we do that. Is there a policy? But in, in broad principle terms, so long as nobody's disadvantaged, you're comfortable with that model, reckon? This doesn't touch our existing in place grants that we give. That, those are the like, contestable grants. Yeah, so those, yeah, okay. Contracts. Just had to quickly ask that question. Are the multi year grants? Yes. yes. Mm. So if you only Oh, I'll come back to you in a second there. The only thing in the tail for this is the limit in place in the community board terms of reference. Uh, <laughs> we didn't adopt so sorry. Uh, so it's me, we didn't adopt that yesterday, uh, and that was um, adopted. Yeah. Well, no, so, back to the original uh, terms of reference. Oh, of course, yeah. So, True. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to clarify what I think Martin said is that my understanding is the Thames Community Board don't care if it's discretionary or contestable. What they do care about is that it's 75,000 for the reasons of well being in the community. But they're not we, we were is, that what, is that what you said? Uh, page 12. No, no. So, sorry, Terry. Peter is saying what he thinks the community board and what the community board, board likes, right. and what the community board said in their submission yeah. is they want the lot. They want want seventy five thousand, right? The full amount that was in the LTP. But they, my my guess is that they don't care if it's discretionary or. And um, we were a split board when we had that meeting, and so we ended up putting in the seventy five, but it was it it was three four. I I have a feeling that they'll be happy with not having any with having something, not necessarily having the full amount. I think we'll be happy if I can speak with them. So happy to wear that if I'm if I'm speaking out of turn. So if we accept that, uh, the general feeling is that uh, the preference is to go with a fully discretionary fund across all community boards, accepting that there is going to be a cut as part of the annual plan and proposal, but that we have some, or 12 months, we have the option of potentially some gap fillers there that we've still got to move through. So around your curveball, because we didn't adopt the community board terms of reference yesterday, we will, but we do have another meeting before the 1st of July, a council meeting at which we could adopt those terms of reference, correct? So we can make that a I'm sure you can do the wording to reflect the conversation that we had yesterday, which was rightfully by Peter that we shouldn't be capping that discretionary fund in the policy in case it changed, which it looks like it might do right now. Yeah, through the chair, I think we'll make a decision today. We will make the resolution today. Yep. Um, so that we can build the annual plan. We wouldn't want to be wanting to wait until the next. Yeah. So that's how we would. We would need to make. Um, a uh, special resolution today that you're stepping outside of the children's preference okay. um, for this one year period. Oh, okay. Yeah, could do that. Can, can I just confirm? You're talking discretionary. There's two funds here, right? Discretionary and contestable. And contestable. Yeah, yeah. So are you saying. <coughs> contestable would go. And only have the $20,000. Uh, well, well these are what it's saying it's going to cut it in half yeah. and add them together. That's what the chart's so, yeah. saying. Is that what you're saying? That's yeah. It. Okay. So I'm on board. Yeah. For yeah. one year only. One year only. So that, and that's yeah, that's yeah. your option through. Yeah, so that's um yeah. and it's going to simplify things, it's gonna make it the same model across all boards. Yep. And it's locally funded anyway, so it doesn't come out of district funding anyway. So whatever it is, it'll be locally funded. What what we've what we've got on the table now um will provide um some continuity and it won't have an impact on the ratings 
increase that's proposed unless the, the amount of the fund is increased above what's proposed here at the moment. So if there are some gaps, that's what Lauren was talking about. And it differs from board to board. Yeah, so we'll still talk to Lauren anyway, but I'm happy to move this part of it. Yeah. So say we'll take the 50% combined contestable and discretionary yeah. fund resolution is on page 12 as a one only three. Yeah. Option three. Yeah. That's one that's I'm happy to move it. Yeah. So oh, we just that. thank you. So we'll just need to get some wording around that. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. also need to, sorry, I'll come back to you. No, no. We'll also just need to make sure that we cover ourselves in terms of in terms of reference. We might need a special resolution today. Um, have you got a question? Oh, I just want to put the resolution up on the screen. But now we're doing the resolution now. I think probably we should okay. do it and get it noted. That's right. We'll need to carry self on that. Chair, we've got the resolution. Thank you. Um, that's option three. That's option three and then pack. Yeah. Okay. So option three in the in the figure three, which is on page twelve of the agenda. Do we, we want ours knocked down to ten or just leave it at that? Just I think so. Don't yeah. spend the whole thing. Very you little back on the whole thing. You don't know what's just leave it coming up. The simplest text. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, uh, we're sending some of the. We're sending some. Otherwise, so. Take it. Take it. You don't get the money though. Uh, 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 there's <laughs> a okay. black end of it. Which is always a lot. We haven't decided about the major events and yet. But this is. Highlighted in pink. Yeah, yeah. So because you might need to use it for events and you're just yeah, true. So it's same at this point. I'm ready. Different. Down some underlining. Oh, no, thank you. Would you like to follow my physical highlight? I am so sad that I don't have a highlighter. It's making me actually sad. No, that's the fact. No, but I can't. I'm, it's right. That's room. I think. Just. While Ari is working on that, we want to get the wording right. Can we take a five minute conference break? Yes. yes. Enough time to run down to paper class to get a highlighter. Oh, yeah, to buy a highlighter. And then I'm paying exactly. I'm thinking governance. Oh, I heard Yeah, there's a pile of Oh, Yes. It's like magic. It's amazing. How does she know? Because she's she online. Is all the new we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> A voice from the ether. Yeah. Yeah. What?
Gary, are you back with us? Coughing and sneezing. <laughs> Oops. All right. Okay, so then we leave that the, the chat through to or through to Gary just to see the Yeah, I'll just speak to my screen screen share. Just get in the moment. So what we're doing now is we're looking at a suggested resolution three with the amendments that you see in front of you, um, which is the wording of what we discussed. I'll let you read through it and make sure that everyone is clear and understands what we're working on. And then I'll ask for a mover and a seconder for just item three. Happy to move. Terry uh, and Billy, thank you. That was really good. Okay, can we just go to the top of that again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, but it goes to for inclusion of the proposed OPEX adjustments. And we're just outlining here the proposed copy. Yeah. Okay. Proposed copy adjustments. Just for um, this. It's just a suggestion area. Granted, there'll be more for you to slide. So, to be clear on that, if all of the rest of the things on that list were included in resolution three, then we will need to do another. Resolution which covers the rest of the things on the list because all this is councillors are only voting on the contested fund. Yes, so the first here. bit is about um, um, we could amend the first bit, Ari, if we wanted to about just make take adjust take it for adjustment. Yield the following adjustments. So, I mean, we can endorse for inclusion the proposed of adjustments as consulted on with the following amendments. You have a statement like that at the start, so and then we would just list the amendments to what, 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 what I think the councillors <laughs> have a slight concern about is this list brought up. Yes. Yeah. Those topics adjustments, we are only voting on the contestable funding part of it. Yeah. We still need to have a resolution which addresses all of the other yeah, things. Sorry, could you prefer we could just get some level of agreement on them right up. You go through the rest of our things and then you might want to um, vote on it at the end. Personally, I think we've got this one in front of us. We've got the amended wording. We need to nail this one down, whether it's 3.3a or 3.1 or something, nail that one, and then because once we lose the wording of that, we want to go back to that other risk. Do we not just have to say, um, as an option three in this annual plan deliberations document, which is how it's laid out? That's what we've said, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't say up there that that's option three of the. Down, down. Oh, sorry, Kate might. In the way through down there. Sorry, Kate. Option three is down further. Um, you could do in terms of referring to the other alternative option that's in the report. This does just uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah. Yeah. any doubt to avoid any doubt. Yeah. So just to be clear, if we if we vote in favour of this, we have also voted in favour of the risk of the item on that list. No, you can no. stop. No. And further underneath this point, this resolution, we'll be with the following adjustments. Yeah. We list this one and then we'll continue to list okay. others. All right, so let's get this one out of the way. We've got a mover and a seconder on this. All those in favour? Aye. Most against? That is Terry. Thank you. Well done, team. All right. Do we have Gary? Mm -hmm. the, is Gary? Uh, we've tried to message him, but uh, it looks like he's. Okay. No, no, that's, I don't, no, no, I am, I am here. I am here. I was just blowing my nose. Sorry. <laughs> just wanted okay. to check that you're still here, Gary. I'm, you, Gary. I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, we like our councillors. <laughs> Some other um, other bits of that operational works program which I've noted, councillors have so far already commented that they want to discuss further in the retained earnings, savings, events, and the three waters investigation fees. Um, so, you know, we could perhaps um, to keep trying just to be able to reconfirm what the proposed budget saving is, and then we could have that discussion on each of those and hopefully um, identify if we need to make any further changes. Thanks, Kate. My feeling is that from earlier discussion on the Havens of Foot, we probably have gone as far with retained earnings as we can with the information available. So I'm not personally seeing that there's much more that we can go for, much further we can go because we don't know what we don't know. Um, there is a number in there. Uh, I'm just, just to clarify, Aiden, we've got 2.001 million. You said 2.7. You'll be added another 600k in the way of So, in the first couple of years, it's 2 million. And then, uh, you've got it there, Kelly, as soon as it goes to me. 2 million impact on rates was a saving of 2.4%. 2.6, what's the number on that? And has that been done? Has that 2.6 been included in here? No, we haven't seen those yet. No, we haven't seen those yet. Because we have a commitment to some of our retained earnings. So, yeah, yeah, this is exactly why. This document here, at the top where it says retained earnings 2 million, so 2 million, with saving of 2.4. If you go down to the next line, you've got reserves, power, reserve, reserve interest. Plus um, additional district retained earnings, 913,000. Oh, they're yeah, right. In that 913,000, there's the additional 600,000 that Aiden is referring to. So it is in there, it's just not in that top of the Okay. Is, is it fair to say that's, that's a mix of the majority of that is district retained earnings and a little bit of local? Yes. So, the vast majority? Yeah, the vast, vast majority. Uh, look here, two point six six hundred thousand k is like so nearly two million. That's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Two million is district six fifty is local. Yeah, yeah, one point five five is district. So yeah, we have got those figures for what each um, board's got in, in retained. Yeah, yeah. it's not because you read them now. Yeah, be great because yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of 2022, which is sold, um, yep. just reported on that. Yeah. We've got uh, Coral Media's got 243k. 243. Yep. 243. Uh, one limiter is 204. 204. Mercury Bay has 419. 419. You're doing okay. I'm doing all right. <laughs> and I'm speed uh, Toro has 663. Some of that's allocated to us. Okay. Gate Park, isn't it? Oh, okay. And Fiends has 61. Dollars. Oh, million? Million? <laughs> what, sorry, what? Sorry, sorry. what? Yeah, sixty one dollars. I'll say you've got yeah. So so can I just ask you a question? Yeah. So can I just ask you a question? And I don't know who's gonna answer this one. Um probably you don't know. We have um local retained earnings being by 
not doing some work in, in those particular wards over uh, over a period of time. That's that's the real result. That's how we got those pain earnings. So when we apply, you will use the half of the, that amount for um, for a rates reduction. Does that actually mean that the half that's coming out of each ward will go back into that ward to keep the rates in that ward only? Yes, that's right. And the district uh, one will just goes back to where the district. But only. That, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's actually fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that is ward money. Yeah. Your right. retained earnings have to follow the half. I guess. Where it's come from, that's all I want to get right up here. So it is. So I'm just sorry, looking, Billy. Yeah, just looking at um, storm damage off of the mercury paint two point two six one mil. Can some of the no the retained earnings can go so against that? Fifty percent of that four hundred odd k will go against our current rates, yeah. and then out of what is left. Will be the project manager um, Esplanade piece of work. Yeah, so like, unless we do that. So, no, but why are we rating for it in here? Because that's meant to come out as. So, yeah, it's very, really, um, as part of this team plan, we've got that 110K, and I'll take a set because the uh, Esplanade is coming out of the tank and per, but there was a resolution to yes. underclimb mm -hmm. tank units. I thought it was 80,000. But there's 80,000 here. That's not that's that's an old office. Oh, of course. Yes, yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so there's about 170,000. That's right. I remember now. So, um, so the ADK capex that was 100%, just as 80, it's just not the recruitment. It's actually for all the safety because in that area. So on the wall. Yeah, on the wall. It's a bit of a Investigation in the pockets, investigation around your risk and our um, solutions. Yeah. Part of that, we do mm -hmm. some on current safety capital yeah, expenses yeah. as part of it at the same time. Thanks, Thank you. John. Thank you. Hey, can I just give some clarity, please, around the, the funds and the names of the funds and separation between the funds? So we've got Tyra Bonham, for example, retained earnings 663, and the skate park money was. Came from a specific fund. Is that fund included in the retained earnings? No, it was a separate, completely separate fund. It's a total yeah. land, land and subdivision. So it's a different fund. So those funds lying around there, <laughs> they don't need to sell them. No, they all have a different fund as a specific. It's allocated. Uh, allocation is oh. most of those other ones are capital related ones, like the you know, subdivision ones. And they they come about from the city conditions. I think if money's rolled over and closed, close enough to deal with that. Well, that yeah, project for yeah. rolled over for that. So we have yeah, four types of funds. We've got depreciation reserves, which go to funding renewals. We've got the DC reserves. Yeah, we've got retained earnings, and the last one is special reserves, which that land subdivision sits in. Uh, our Power New Zealand one sits in there. I guess they're all the sort of ones that don't click into the other ones, the special. So, Chad, is what I There's a policy behind how each one can be used. There's a the purpose reserve. Yeah. So, specific criteria, no special reserves can only be given for that specific criteria. So, yeah. if that Fund that uh, that's targeted for Tyra Skate Park is not included in these retained earnings, then Tyra will probably can pretty much subsidise the rest of us based on. I'll go go and see Lots of ranting. You want to come with me? <laughs> so I just want, just want to make those that you absolutely confident that the retained earnings. I think specifically about Mercury Bay here uh, there because. Remember when we were going to do that land purchase without mentioning names, we were going to use half a million dollars out of your retained earnings and then we didn't have enough. You didn't no. have it at that stage. I didn't know yeah. that. How come you've got half a million close enough to the amount? Yeah. 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 Just make sure we buy a, yeah. a plus because they were too plus last time I gave you. You worried about making a comment? I just wanted to go back to Kelly and say about that project manager role 
it may be that's the resolution that we have mm -hmm. that, that it will be funded from there so we can't just push stop right now because there's a resolution in place exactly. but that may be a conversation that the Mercury Bay board want to have is the timing right do we it wait again that may be a reduced role like a three hours a week or yeah days. exactly but that's that's not a that yeah. resolutions in play yes it is <clears throat> Thank you. So, um, in terms of retained earnings, uh, are we comfortable with the information that we've got, where we've landed on that? Yep. Is, yeah. We've got a proposal in front of us. We're all okay. Move on. All right, the bench funds. Well, the questions of the council, we'll do a recap on the bench funds um, that was in with. Major event fund, and I think the beach hop is yes. supposed to have some reduction. Yeah, it's Yes, they were they were based um, from experience and underutilization of some of the funds. Let's do a little recap. Just the beach hop fund that was just original support to help with rubbish and recycling. So what we've done is we actually reduced um, the collection of the rubbishes, and we're doing more type of education, which has actually reduced the cost. So uh, Beach Hop doesn't need as much funding because we're not actually collecting penny funds. With the major event fund, um, in the last 12 months, there hasn't been a huge subscription or applications to the fund. Um, of course, that has been because of COVID. Uh, there are other event funds available. So we've been working with Haurangi, Destination Kalek and Coromandel. Uh, they do have the uh, COVID fund that quite a lot of uh, events um, have applied for, and I uh, will get a list from Kirsten as to what events have already got funding or about to get funding. Um, there was a panel decision on that uh, about t uh, last week, early last week, end of last week. Uh, so, what we're suggesting is again, and it is only for 12 months, um, and that there are other external funders that we can go to, and that there is the events fund uh, from the government that um, events can and have applied to. So just in general terms of um, us needing and willing to support events to, to aid recovery, um, we have options for other funds that we can tap into. But, but this helps us achieve our objectives, but doesn't necessarily uh, cause a problem further down the road with these events not being able to happen. Well, thank you, everyone. Any questions around that? Okay. Three waters investigation fees. Thanks, Lorna. Okay. What's the proposal for no recap of the three waters investigation for no proposal for the reduction? It's at page 77,000 reduction, and Bruce is here. Uh, yeah, so um, the investigation fees, the yeah, investigation fees across each of the three waters. Um, when we did that, we went back and we looked at all our operational expenditure. We made it a little bit hard to see if there was anything we could pull back. Um, those big areas we have made some concessions and pulled back, which just means that it potentially will slow down anything that, that comes up that we might want to investigate. So sometimes things happen. Um, they can't go straight into a capital project that needs some investigation. That's what those codes are for. So it just means, like I say, we have to maybe slow down some of the things we're doing, but obviously just keep our priorities. And if anything new comes up, we might have to come back to council and say, look, you know, we don't have the space in the current investigation budgets. And so we might be a little bit more to investigate a finish your advisors, you know. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what that's all about. Bruce, just to clarify, um, there is already some work underway in some of the areas that you would Yes. Yeah. So, can you just give us a recap on? So, yes. So, storm water from storm water perspective, uh, from tar is the key one. So that one's already we've already got that one moving. It's already included. So that one that won't affect that. We'll just keep that one moving. Um, there's a couple of small areas around the place. Albert Street is another area. Thames. Um, we have we are in the middle of procuring a capital item that's going to help us buy a bit of time there. It's a sort of pump that the old air can deploy as required. So that area, so um, so yeah, that's already underway. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of other small areas around the place. And I'm just going to say, for the anger, um, there's one there that we're already uh, working on around Lost Springs. Yeah. 
and we're carrying on the matters of building investigation work on that. We're doing that big space that as part of the South Avenue uh, plan. Um, and there's also a little bit of stuff happening in Austin Drive, uh, looking at what's going on there, um, a very low area of town. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so there, there are some of the existing ones that are going to be course speed. Yeah, that's, <laughs> is that, has that got any investigation work? Uh, Cook's speech, I don't know, uh, in particular, is there somebody in particular you're thinking of? Sure. The ones that all got flooded and it was something. Yes, it was the, it's the lakes. Yeah. So the lakes, um, there was some stuff going on around the lakes. Um, it's not it's not anything pretty big. I know the team have been out on site. They've been out on site and visited the network vessel um, and about and some small things that they are looking at doing about some of the open channels, some of the drainage. Um, so our field group is based up in Fidianga, met on site with them and believe that there was ways that they could um, they could alleviate some of those issues. Uh, if we're not sure the water services we managed to reduce them, so advance those. So I'm comfortable with kind of moving, moving those forward as well. They would sit within existing budgets that are in respect to buying the yeah, process, you know, yeah. more operational, um, operational kind of R&M, um, it's based on the budgets that would be doing that. Do you recall the name of the street? Was it Captain Cook Road? Captain Cook Drive and Cook's Beach? It's well, one parallel to the waterfront, wasn't it? I think it is. Yeah, is, it, is that because there is a block? Um, sorry, it's a bit of detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't okay. pull out my brain, but um, a couple of months, a few months ago. And if they've met people on site, they'll yeah. be steering stuff and the right area. And I, I had an email, I spoke to one of the customers. Yeah. Um, and they, that was the, the afternoon. They already met that with the, with the, my team, and they said, no, no, we're comfortable, we're happy that they met with us, they've heard our concerns. If that's a few ideas, they're going to advance. So they were. Okay, thank you. All right. Any further questions for Bruce on the water investigation themes? Something that was where that's sitting. Thank you. Hey, have we missed anything off that list? Um, not that I'm aware of, but perhaps Ari, if we could bring that presentation back up. Um, if anybody else had any other that they wanted to. Yeah, I'll see this point. Yeah. Can I just ask Bruce a question? I think it's having quite a moment yet to do with the waters, and that is the um, drinking water standards upgrades, Bruce. Yes. It's a biggie. I think it's in your, and they're for about $5 million. Yeah. Um, is that because we are uh, failing to meet current standards, or, or why is that necessary at this particular point in time? Uh, so this is part of the big thirty-five million dollar project we've been working on for a number of years. So this is to ensure parts are of a technology uh, that is capable to meet the, the current standards. So we'll be going through. You know, um, upgrading plants across the district, and so that's the, the plan just to carry on and finish those off. So, yeah. so are we failing standards at the moment? Yeah, there's areas we can't hit in those standards because of the technology actually isn't at the right level. So, as the standards change, some of that changes you know around your sampling regimes, which you can obviously change, that's easy, but there's also things around um, log reduction of, um, of um, things that are in water that you're going to be able to get down to a certain level of uh, bacteriological suppliers. Um, this is the standard of increase. The standard of increase the treatment plants need to be able to treat with that kind of higher level. So when no one's died under the current level, um, what's the push the next further out for it? Uh, well, it definitely wouldn't be my recommendation. Um, I don't want to end up in jail, so not to not to improve a treatment plant. And I know it's not the true, but um, yeah, so I, I would recommend it. I think, you know, again, We've got areas we can't hit those standards, but if we've got programs that we're investing in it, then at least we're doing the right thing. We're trying to get to the right place rather than like actually there's just water, you know. So yeah, I think. I'm not going to say that. They sure would. Yeah. So yeah. the new CEO came out otherwise really stepping into the space, and we'll be starting to monitor, monitor and stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, if we deviate from our plan of investment, DIA, you're going to have to take a look at that. Um, there's certainly some sign up procedures we need to go through. If we, certainly if we're adding more money in, but I'm not sure if we're taking 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 There's a level of significance, but if we did, if we did do anything around that million dollars program, they would definitely be interested in. No, that's right. Uh, Tomato ROI would we definitely feel some pain if, uh, if we started making changes like that. That you know the whole change they did um, with the board regulated Tomato ROI is to really ramp that up to to stop councils being able to kind of like shift things around that are critical and essential infrastructure. Just a quick turn. Sorry, ROI being just really good. Sorry, question. Then we'll come. To. Um, one word. How have so? Um, I don't know if this is the right time to ask that question, but um, I don't know who received the email regarding the Wigsmore stream. Um, is it all of us? Did it get as far as you about the people, coliforms, and all the, the testing? And so there was a, there was an amount quoted about getting those 17 properties hooked up, which talking to my people looked perhaps a little bit excessive was it was it thinking about putting like the, the pumps like you know in fitting you've got the yeah, individual pump system. pressure pump system on each property i know that sorry about the detail but i know that's i'm getting the heat from yeah. ha around that yeah i'm not sure exactly all that detail but i mentioned the pumps might be larger because we basically be anticipating further expansion, you know, so it's probably not just pick up 17, it's if we're going to go down that road, you need to have a rain that can handle 17 pressure pump systems coming into it or something like that. Um, and again, these things always just cost a lot more than what you think once you get in there. So um, so we always we always try and, you know, there's a, um, they're up all the costs initially until we get out all the details. So, yeah. so it's it's out as is the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, so just quickly, it was uh, Aileen or you, but was fluoride discussed? Has there been any discussion about uh, So there's, there's definitely stuff coming through from Tomato ROI about fluoride and about making sure that um, you know we, we could be heading off in that direction. Um, basically, what we've done is when we've done these water standards upgrades, these treatment plants, we've anticipated that and facilitated that if we need to have to add fluoride in. We did the letter from Ministry of Health saying you think about it. Yeah. And you might be on the list at some stage. Yeah. And I remember because it, um, the, the first letter came from Ashley, Dr. Ashley, so I was going to explain about that. What is the current status across the district? Uh, Thames, the yeah. only, Thames is the only township that has fluoridation. Thames had it since 1971 when the treatment plant was up there. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, Thames. Yes, Thames. It does come up. It does. Where's the team, mm -hmm. So um, where we landed at the moment is we have uh, got on the um, discretionary fund. We now need to, uh, under item 30, um, finalise this one. Uh, so can we please bring the resolution up on the screen so that everyone's really clear what we're voting? Just work off the chat. On the amendments, the now we're voting on the rest of item three. Um, we need a new mover and a second for this. I don't think we do. We just wanted to I just wanted to make sure that if you were happy with rest of there's no further that we no have to change that add to the list. So under I think you've already um, resolved that. Okay, so I, under item three, uh, got endorses for inclusion proposed OPEX adjustments or endorses for inclusion proposed OPEX adjustments as consulted with the following amendments. Got that amendment in there. Yeah, I'll just bring it. It just seems to me the wording of that gives us two options. We need to be really clear on what we have voted on, uh, which looks like we take out the first part and we leave us with the second part, where we are happy with the amendments that we've got in there to cover the discretionary funds. Yeah. So on your packs, what I'm going to suggest is that we cross out the first part of that resolution. 
which leaves us endorses for inclusion 2023-24 annual plan with proposed OPEX adjustments as consulted on with the following amendments as a result of this submission. We've already voted on that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel like we need to go to another vote. We're all happy. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Just Thank you so much. All right. Moving on. Thank you, everyone. So, um, item four is Poland Street. Um, do we have? Do we need to have a discussion and presentation specifically on Poland Street? And if so, how does that happen? So, in the in the the H version, um, but in, in a, the question was asked in the consultation documents, we have this project in its entirety um, out. So, for consultation, it's proposed to retain budget and the overall planning and design. Um, and now the proposal is to defer it out. Um, Which, yeah, which is what we've got in that resolution here is to approve the deferral of the Collins Street project to a prioritization of storm recovery projects. Can you just remind us, please, what was the value of the investigation budget? I think it was 750 for the three water and 250 for the road and reinstatement. That's just for the planning and design mm -hmm. phase. Um, the three waters are three separate items in the CapEx list. So 1.1 total for that planning and design element, which we originally said, let's keep that in, defer the work. Now we're saying all the planning and design work, defer it for 12 months. So essentially nothing happens in Bolland Street for 12 months. Have I got that right? I think so. Right. Can you hear from the Thames folks about what was that? I just had to step out for a moment. Um, okay, I can start with the question. So we're confident because we were told at some point that the Poland Street pipes were the worst in the district. So we're confident that if we delay the planning, which will ultimately delay the replacing of this, that will be okay. Uh, we haven't. So we haven't. So we haven't had any big issues uh, in recent times. And again, this is coming back to one of those risk items. You know, so we take a bit of risk by preparing a plan over here, and something does happen. You know. Street, yeah, we'll make up mark, yeah. then we'll, we'll have to prepare it and come back and talk about that. Yeah, you know, we'd always look and see how we could do that under our old existing renewals, but obviously we've, we've cut those, but the price yeah. cut those by 50 percent. So, again, it's just a bit of juggling and just you know trying to manage it within the means. But the risk exists that we can come back and say, Look, last week we had to go and repair it, and this is what it cost. Okay, right. I'm comfortable that we can carry that risk, you know. Cool. Again, can I ask the Thames councillors what your feeling is to what the business community is going to feel about that deferral? Are they, is there part of them that's going to say, yep, we're happy with that because we really don't need disruption at the moment? So while we get back on it. Uh, uh, yeah, the only, the only comment was that we were going to continue with design, et cetera, et cetera, with a view to having a shovel ready project or something that was, but now we're taking it. Rick suggesting taking that design out, design out, um, that activity out, which I assume is to create resource to new roads and sort of thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, that that'll be fine. Thank in you. my view, no problem. Oh, huge. Okay. So we're comfortable with that at the moment. So can I get a mover and a second, at least for item? And Peter, uh, sorry, Terry. Yeah. All right. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Items carried. Um, item five. Are we able to go back to that presentation, Ari? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I think the last two is growing. <laughs> um, so just looking at the Kipix project as a whole, we think um, we've talked a little bit about it already this morning. We do have a couple of slides, just to do a reminder. So we consulted on a, um, a $48 million CapEx program. That included some adjustments for inflation. It included 11.2 million carry forwards. 
and it included 2.2 million of road and storm recovery works, and it signaled that need for further storm recovery. Post consultation, we've now confirmed the storm recovery projects that have been included in there that um, initially jumped the CAPEX program up to 59.8 million. So that is where Bruce's and his team's work came in to do that revision of the CAPEX program, um, as well as the, looking at the current budget revision. So now we've got a new total of 49.2. How do you feel, Bruce, for that? Uh, am I feeling like 90, 90, 95? We've talked a bit about, you know, the reasoning around that is around deliverability, being able to deliver on those storm recovery projects, in particular, freeing up staff of capacity. There are some risks we've talked about already around some of the reductions in renewal budgets. Um, so I think, yeah, there's some of those that will cover us as well. I think that's right. Covered. So, <laughs> no, I think uh, I'm, I'm comfortable as exactly 100% everything Kate said. And again, I've come back to that point that, um, that Aileen mentioned is that if everything goes swimmingly and we're doing amazingly well, there's nothing to stop us coming back to council and going through that process again. Yeah. Let's bring stuff back in. Mm -hmm. But I think at this stage, with everything we know and with the potential risks around the unknown, I think this is the right thing to do um, at this time. And likewise, if things go peel, peel up, come and talk to us as well. Yeah, so it's yeah not just exactly. The good story, and like I said, it's yeah, a bad story. Keep in touch. Yeah, exactly. Early, early things. Yeah. It feels like we're taking a conservative approach in terms of what we think can be delivered, um, and keep us in line with our budget. But less than we're open for is. We get additional funding if we've got additional capacity if we're ahead of the game. Is that still all right? Yeah, but and the puzzle right to will be on the other side. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, the rose tinted yeah. glasses for you, I think. Yeah. We're all great, we're going to be able to do this when we see we're going to make a reality. We'll do this. Yeah, things will happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so just in a good year, if we deliver $50 million worth. Yes, exactly. And like the community is going to be on the bar side. Yeah. But can I get a can I get a picture of what partnership arrangement is in there? Are we, are we delivering this? Is this all council or is there a partnership in what we've got? Are he incorporated in that or where do we sit? Potentially. So I guess these are our financials, and this is the bits we're paying for. There's a whole a whole bit of question about what it is yeah. to deliver by that. Yeah. So the our capacity to deliver. Could be enhanced by the inclusion of other partners in terms of capacity. Yes, the so, when we go through a procurement process, it looks like some ways to deliver. We run in normal, normal times, particularly as to VTA does the road, but in extraordinary times, potentially that's different. VTA can assist, or we can assist them, or we can train off our contractors and not compete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sort of those sorts of discussions, which are only relevant. But they're very operational and they'll be taken, you know, at many layers down and such. The other, the other point I would mention about the overall CapEx program is we do have some quite big big items that you know we've got some good confidence over. So obviously there's like two million dollars in there for buying wheelie bins or rubbish. So that's like placing that's like an order, you know, so that's not a you know starting to have to go out and manage two million dollars worth of project we've got corporate in there, big project, um, you know, seven million bucks or something. Right around that number, and then we've got drinking water standards at that 5.4 million. And, and again, we've consistently hit that like we haven't had an issue because we yeah. did a big procurement for the whole thing early on when we went through all of New Zealand and all that. So it's just like so, those just off the top of me, those are the kind of big three, which will be a big chunk of that. But again, we just don't know what's going to happen. We'll all end up like that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Terry, just before you start, Peter had his hand up earlier and I, I completely okay. ignored him. I don't know Bruce. So, sorry, it's coming. Um, so, Bruce, can you cast your mind back to the FY 21 22 year? Right, yeah. 
And what did we end up delivering on projects in that year? Oh, I'm off of the head, sorry, I don't that figure. Um, it's in the city. Yeah, it was pretty. It was a pretty challenging year. Smack in the middle of COVID. And we're about to deliver a year delivering 42 million of projects based on what we heard yesterday. Yep. I struggle to have any belief in our ability to deliver $49 million worth of capex. Yep. And the problem with that is that we're rating our ratepayers yep. on delivering $49 million. We're creating an expectation that we will do this for our ratepayers and we get to the end of the year and we've only done 42 million. And I, it concerns me that we just have a culture of being unrealistic about our capital works capability, um, which creates expectations, which then create frustration and non-performance and all that sort of stuff. So I'm sitting here, um, uh, full of unbelief. And thinking that if we were to have a more realistic capital works program that we knew we would deliver, at, pick a number, 44 million, then that would also have uh, some sort of rating impact. We wouldn't be rating our rate payers for something we're not going to do. That's my challenge. A, a big chunk of that, though, is roading costs, isn't it? That relate to storm recovery. Yes. Took those out, we would be looking low 40s. Very good question. Yeah, I just hear what Peter's saying, and I'm just um, impressed with Aileen's ability to look at this and understand this better than we do. And wants to fix it. Sure, that's on their plan to fix it. We have struggled over the years, Peter. We really struggled to get them. We know that, but we are getting better at it. And I just think we need an opportunity to. We've done a pretty good gut out on some of these projects, so we're not telling the the, the ratepayers we're losing everything for the roads. We're losing a lot, but we the, the benefit is we're getting hopefully better roads out of it. So I know there's a challenge there, and and the storm events is the biggest challenge we've had for a long time. So. Hopefully at the end of the year, if it's not 49, if it's something bigger, but it would have been a lot of improvements that we can go and sell a story to the people that we're improving something that they all benefit from. So I hear your story. I've, I've half that story myself. So but I just say good luck and let us keep us informed and we'll see where it goes. I think that Bruce makes a really good point about the mix. $7 million of COVID, for example, which is underway and I don't see any reason why that couldn't continue and deliver. Um, the, the, the basically the purchase all the, the waste the wheelie bins and things. So that 49 million might not be made up of the same mix that has been gone in previous years. It might be some fairly simple straightforward stuff and some of it might be stuff that was Behind schedule earlier and now as we playing catch up and as Terry said about the voting. Can't trick a code, but we'll see where it goes. Um, so Bruce, maybe I don't know if you want to add anything just in your feeling about the mix that's in there and yeah. the level of problems. <laughs> yeah, through the chair, I hear the sentiment and um, we do take this, I take it very seriously. Um, but I understand the, the nervousness. Um, Waving a bit of paper at me. Home again. What that is. Um, probably stop talking. What I would say is, oh yeah, just done the numbers. I quickly did those too. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're about fourteen and a half million non-storm events. So pick up your on point. It's a big number. Mm -hmm. The bins are two million, which we've talked on. Koku seven. If we will satisfy. So that's that's like twenty nine million just in that in itself. So. Um, that is a big change. So the bins is a huge change from previous years. We haven't actually been purchased. Kopu, we haven't had that in the past. Drinking water standards, we've had that, so maybe take that out. And then storm damage, we've had some, but not this kind of magnitude. So the mix is very different. 
um, and I'm, I'm much more confident than I did before. I, I have, BH have taken a, a big knife to the program. Yeah, and a big knife for the series. Right, I have got it. Now I struggle to see where else I can actually take any more out of it. Like, like you said to me, and I like a challenge, but you said to me, you've got to get to this. I don't know. I don't know how we'd actually do it. So I have time I have I have taken a serious um it's been a really serious look, you know. And like we said, we don't go fifty percent on renewals, that's not something that we I like to do with so um, yeah, early. Um and re really appreciate the work that the team's done on that. And I think it's it's a really hard pill to swallow, but uh, those figures around roading and, and stormwater, I think that's really important about our comms, that why is this such an enormous, you know, like reiterating where Gabrielle and Hale and, and the accumulated effect of those storm events, even just looking at that piece of paper and setting up just the storm events to 11 mil. Um, it has to be communicated really clearly to our communities, and uh, particularly the Eastern Seaboard, where we've taken one of the biggest hits. Just one more, if I can. Sure. There's no ECMP in here, is there? No. We're using Wakako Tay maybe as a, a, a channel for using that through their roading options? Um, yeah, we're, we're making sure, and they know this, they make, we're making sure that SMP is integral to any of their discussions and decision making and our for a more resilient network moving forward. So right. it's all, yeah, but you agree, there's no CapEx. There's still investigations ongoing in a number of areas um, on the back of the SMP project. It's a last trip today, I think. Um, so just to, um, I've just asked, Okay, with the um, RTS obviously was budgeted in there, that's going forward to the limits of the available budget and the rest of if there is a shortfall or the staging part, that'll be part of the LTP conversation. Um, also, that is committed. Am I right on that, Bruce? That is committed. Um, i my pages to get my first thing. It's underway now. <clears throat> yeah, so we've yeah, so we deferred that based on the fact that we've got it under review. So rather than carry through a budget, which actually might not be correct because we're in the middle of a review, we've said, um, we've said let's come back. Once we've done that review, we've got the go forward plan and then bring that back to council. So we've got the full transparency for that before we kind of jump into anything in that space. And councillors need to be clear about what the status is and questions are going to get us. Yeah, and so, and through the chair, our, our plan that we're working hard to is to have the go forward plan um, finalised by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. um, don't look at me like that, Kate. Um, <laughs> um, the cost of the wheelie bins yes. is a capex site in this next financial year. Correct. Is there any reason why we need to take all that? As a capex this financial year, is there any uh, merit and benefit and reason why we couldn't put wheelie bins over the next two years or three years? Well, that's um, my answer to that. Finance team just like to be loan funded anyway as capex, so effectively it's, it's that cost over a, over the borrowing period anyway. So I don't I don't know how you I don't know what else you'd do. To try and spread that cost anymore. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, I think uh, with the general audience, and as do we need them? We do need them. All of the first year, that was that you'd say. So, do you uh, think we can we pay for them over 10 years? Loan fund over 10 years is. Yeah, well, we, yeah, so it's, all, yeah. it's already because it's capped, it's already loan funded over 10 years. Mm -hmm. yes. So Bruce, could I just ask Waste Management, have they got a cycling centre somewhere here? Recycling centre? Sorry? You know, like Kobe's got a place where they sort everything out? Sorry, yeah. Is that a here? No, there's, there's hmm? No, no, we're talking about the MERF. So the, the Smart Environmental MERF, they were sorting all the recycling. Um, they don't have a centre right here now, but I know there's lots of discussions ongoing at the moment. So um, <coughs> they, they figured it out. They've got options, I imagine. They'll figure out what's the best option for them moving forward. So it 
for us at this moment. Um, that's the it currently is a to review of that. Yeah, the Turi here supports just the landfill and the um re um we waste and we're in waste process. Yeah. 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 Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, that's a the case actually right. That would actually be a good topic to throw into our education and solid waste yeah. Yeah. item that we that we can discuss in a different different day. Yeah. Um is this a point where we talk about things that might be not in that we think should be in? <laughs> so I think I would like to talk about um Butter of Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just make a suggestion? I'm just wondering if we could go around the room and I could write up specific projects on the whiteboard and look at them work through them and that would be really yep. helpful. Just use a whiteboard marker that's you describe to me see this. So this this is not fine. Uh, that what we're talking about. Yeah, but that's one of the huge comes in. But is this the final project? No, the garages. Only the ones that are accused. There's a greater cavity. There's another one of these, eh? This is just what's in the. Yeah, so here. Changes in the report. So do we get it up in the report? We want to pull all the stuff. Right. That's what we want. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really want to know. We want a bigger, uh, bigger print. Oh, well done. The one that's yeah, we're cooking it. So the suggestion is that we the get bones of this after we break blood. Yes. And we have a security guard on that list. Yes. So <laughs> nobody speaks in here with the way it doesn't hang on straight away. <laughs> Can we take okay over that? Can we mail it to Gary? Yes. Is this thing that's the same as what's in the agenda? This I did sort of oh, okay. Bigger. Okay. Just bigger. Bigger. Oh, that's it. And fold it in a way that I can do it. Mm. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do this Sorry. Yes, we can go through these in order, like anything to like community board area books, and we can list them on the whiteboard roughly in order. Yep. And then we'll come back to them. Mm -hmm. On our call. Ultra Valley. Um, we should be placing them on that. Um, we're going to do that. Okay. We have any other. Was Peter what was posted for the other railway? Yeah, four point five. Okay, so yeah. some of the readiness teams and some of the first district. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. The next step. Five point eight. Okay. Five Yeah, uh, I was just one. I just want to comment on, if I can, the parks and reserves. Isn't that a contract model? Are we um, going to cut that in half? Yeah, so, so parks and reserves offense is the contract, and the capital yeah. is outside the contract. The capital is outside the contract. Right. Often, we often we the staff will use our operational yeah. operational contract to do that capex, but yeah. it's not given to them as a right. So right. they can use local you contractors like and safety and. That. Can use, for example, rec services. Nice question. Um, uh, given we're trying to preserve some capacity to do roading and all the rest of it, what, what takes a, is it one big project versus lots of small projects? What, what's the balance like? Generally, one big is, do you mean like what's easier? Or, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, generally, one big is easier, yeah. like some of the more ones. Um, take more time, but it, it's so dependent on what the type of project is. So if it's a, a walkway in an area that you know everyone's got a different view on whether it should be there or not, like right? the ones that take a long time because of the consultation and the challenges. So those are the ones that really burn up 
balance. Yourself with so, we've gone through teams. Any other teams? Yeah. Yep. Happy. Love Blake. Um, Carmelo. Questions, top, uh, projects to put on the right board, Carmelo. I have one that is really not going to be popular. Okay. Yeah, let's. Well, I can't see any other reductions, but um, we tried to do this before. I rebook, not reducing the whole amount, but they're not removing the whole amount, but I'm kind of looking at my other councillors reducing it for a year. Oh, I, I, I know it's not going to be popular, but we're not going to look at footpaths and streetlights and things like that. Reflections of previous years, we have a contract around supply of library box. It's not, it's not quite that. It's not quite that. Okay. Um, not quite like that. So you could be uh, birds in the past, touching library book budgets. Um, not saying you can't. What I did do is I worked with obviously with my team with Jan, our librarian. We'd taken out. We had like a, a small furniture, library furniture budgets in there. They've gone. We preserved the library books. Um, one of the reasons for that is, is obviously that's not an issue around deliverability, you know, by library right. books. The other issue is that is that they um, new new books get charged out at like two dollars a week for the first 12, 24 months. Mm -hmm. So if you're not actively buying new books, you don't have a supply of these new books to come through to then get the revenue. So in a lot of ways, the revenue actually can offset the capital expenditure because the revenue is coming from the books. So you know, there we go. Moving up, we'll move it up. We'll look. It's operational money coming in, really, really, and when the books are bought, it's the capex. So, so I've been through that, considered that, looked at it, um, and landed on where they are. But good question. Is so it going to the Just to put some, some numerical perspective on that, uh, $51,000 of capex. And we need to get seventeen million dollars to move the rates ones. So mm -hmm. the effect of the rating for fifty-one thousand eight hundred library courses. But the, the impact on local community probably needs to be significant. But very brave raising it. All right, we're breaking up. What is any other week for bay items? Yeah, Great. I've been through it with uh, the fine tuned home, and, and I'm happy to move on to Fong Gary online. Yes, I am. Yeah, just checking that you didn't have anything else to add in. Yeah, just the nip verb construction, whether we can have a discussion over that. It's part of the stormwater network. Oh, um, um, Oh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there was a flash you had the Christmas lights. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, any other two comments? I just computer software hardware. Guys, oh, with a break. Sorry. Okay. Um, economic development, emergency management, hazards, property, recordings. I just one again in here. I, I wasn't in the Pawanui local, but Pawanui Holland Stream improvements. It's going on for six years, and there's no money in either either column. And it was seven million dollars three years ago. <laughs> Might be a bit of reaction. Yeah, there could be. Um, and again, that's that's you know, that one. I considered that quite carefully before we proposed to do that. Um, is the consent lodged? Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, the consent's lodged. Yeah. Um, 
What I would say about about that one is that there's definitely differing views in the community. We've obviously, as you, as you know, we've done quite a bit of work there just around the stream and improving how that works. So quite a lot of stuff that's actually given us some good improvements. A number of um, number of the community, including maybe one of the board members, are like believing that actually everything's pretty good now. Um, whilst we're saying long term, you need to do a big upgrade. But in the short term, it actually seems to be doing quite well. We didn't have she corrected me, we didn't have any issues over any of those events that we had earlier this year. So I think it does need to be done. All right. But I think we can we live with live with it at the moment and live with the small improvements that we make and prefer that to make that piece of the state. But it has to be done at some stage. Can I grab it off the board so we don't need to? Do and I'll go together today. Yeah. Can I just ask about Brophy's Beach? Given that Councillor Murray McLean is the councillor anyway. Why is that on It's for me. Yeah. Just kidding. So that got smacked pretty hard in day two. And it's still in the, it's still. It's under the, it's under the, the watchful eye of the shrine. Yeah, it's part of the. Parkway. Part of the parkway, yeah. Part of the parkway, yeah. There is infrastructure in that area as well, quite yeah. stuff, you know, so there's a lot of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Another question if I can. Um, I'm just asking these questions openly. So um so maintenance chip seals, is that does it get far funding to if we're doing car parks and car resales? Is that far funding for that or not? It's um, car parks doing uh, um, but maintenance chip Yeah, maintenance chips. Okay. So Happy with the number of them? Not at 91, yeah, correct. Not at 91, so it'll be the standard 51. 50 response. response thing. So right. the 91, that's a good point. The 91 is just installment emergency yeah, right. remediation yeah. stuff that's still in Africa. But so if that was deferred, you'd still get paid for it when you did it? Uh, or so is it locked into a program? The challenge is that it's at NCTA, if they would look favourably on us referring. Um, deferring maintenance chip seals. Right. And the reason for that is that eventually you, you've really got a risk of the, um, of the foundation of the pavement blowing apart if you don't do the chip seals. And this again could be another topic for our educational series that um, we'll come back yeah. to. But um, chip seals is, is all about waterproofing and keeping water out of the road. And so can you think people can have a seal in that road for them? It's fine. And you need to go close to it if you're doing these kind of things. You'll see very fine cracks in the in the seal. That lets water in, and as soon as the water gets in, it just blows apart the weight of vehicles and stuff driving over the top of the pore pressure, and it blows apart the foundation. Then you've got to rebuild the site. And you've seen that happen around interstate highways around. So yeah, let's kind of keep it on top of it. It's like kind of paint. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. If you want a quick question, first the Woody Hang of Woody is the unbundling offer. Yeah. What, what's Again. So, so what that's all about is that Fidianga um, didn't just have areas, and um, they have a number of developments that were done, you know, like apartment buildings and you know, house type developments where, because there was no requirement for a water meter on each property, there's like one pipe going in to service 20 plus and right. Now, it's not if you want a water meter, you really need to break the whole up, and so you then have to do quite a bit of work. Yeah, and the folds to actually separate them all out. So, yeah. yeah. So, how does that fit in by not doing the unbundling mm -hmm. with our, with our, um, so we're, not, we're not charging right now. So, the plan was going to step a few years. Yeah, it was. I mean? wanted to start charging straight away, but. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, how long did you say it Bruce? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was Bruce. It was, it was only two years or something. Two years, I think. Yes, so it was probably that, coming up. That's so. just about. Up and running. Yep, so there might be an issue there where we we, uh, we can't charge them individually for that water. Um, so we might just have to work through that as an issue. There's not a lot of properties. It's not a lot. No, it's not a lot. It's just a, so not going to affect our ability to no, turn no, those no, water no. meters on and start taking some money for. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's only a cluster of properties in the young, which is quite um, tricky and challenging to do. So they didn't. So when we start charging, just because we are a revenue, and we also know that Woody Anger has some serious water issues from time to time, and I firmly believe this is going to go a little way towards fixing that. When are we going to start that charging regime, Bridget? Um, 
it, it, you know, it, it, yeah. uh, we, we just have to go through a process as far as changing change how we're raising the LTP. I think we will be talking about that. But again, I would say that's. I could, have, I could have misread what you just said to the councillor, but around we're looking for more revenue. So it's not going to give us any more revenue. It's no. just going to be the split between Fair. fixed charge and yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll get it off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think you get less revenue when you think about it. But we'll use less water, I can guarantee Yeah. Jelly's yeah. 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 got a question and then um, I'm just going to hark back to the Hanhei wastewater extension, which we did have a bit of calling all around. I'm just wondering because it's going to be very hard to sell it to the um, Hahe community as being deferred. Is there the possibility to reduce some in here, which is the investigative work, um, so that a definitive report can come back and say they actually looked at it? It's going to be half a million to do this, you know. Even if it was 50,000 a member, I don't know, to say that we're actually exploring this. We're going to come back to you with some solid figures about what the model could look like because you know, there has been an expression of interest from um, residents in terms of having a contribution. Yeah. And then can we have some reporting money? I don't know what my fellow Mercury Bay councillors feel about that. Can I just clarify would that be an OPEX item or would it be an OPEX item? Well, it depends exactly what we, you we know, move it, it depends yeah. where you are in the process. So we can first look at it saying, should we bother exceeding that that's OPEX? So that's what we've been doing, that mm -hmm. on the CapEx. But when you get down to the point about, okay, we've done the investigation, we think it's a good idea, now we want to actually do the designs of how we're going to service it. So I'm, I'm talking design. I'm looking at the CapEx. Yeah. I have an arm wrestle with Hayden and Donna, mm -hmm. but hopefully I'll win. <laughs> so that's what I want some clarity yeah, around. So, so yeah. money for a design process. So you've got something solid to come back to the community yeah. about and they can understand what sort of investment would be needed to do it properly. Yeah. I think, again, we're obviously going to be careful when we start bringing things back in. I think well, this is probably one that you, that you could look at bringing back in. This type of work, how often we're going to deliver this from our capital project delivery and delivery from our water services team. And services manager working most likely with consultants um, to deliver that stuff. So I think that is something you probably could advance. And again, it's always tricky, okay, but about on the fly going, is it 50, is it 100? I think you're probably going with a small thing, a smaller figure, and then just monitor it and make sure we keep in touch with the council. And then we have that opportunity, as Aileen said, to come back, you know, where yeah. if we have had the funds that become available to follow through on that. It's just, I would say, that's one of the hottest issues in our ward. The Most nice. emails I've received over this process. Can I just text it with Donna around the target rating area? Is that inside the. Do we have to do an amendment to the annual plan where we need to bring it in the rating? So it's district at the moment. Yeah, so when it, when it does come in, we would, we would go out and consult, and that we would consult through, probably through an LTP. On that, the variable service change. Yeah. yeah. You're talking specifically waste, uh, waste, 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 yeah. not fresh water. So fresh water at the moment is it's just deferred. That. Yeah. So how we fund that? It will be a district funded investigation to then put it into the book, the rest of it into the targeted rate. Yeah. So that'd be um, that'd be like a we do an area of service um, consultation, or a special consultation process of trying to jump into an RTB, and then that'd be a cost per property that we connect yeah. to the infrastructure and for the development contributions. And they'd have to pay that, and then once once that pays off, it pays off for the common zoo, but you yeah, done, and then it would just continue on with one other zoo. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just searching through the file. Oh, you're looking for things. Um, so just the emergency management. Alert Coromandel not, and the signage. I'm not too sure where clarification is it signage or is that an alerting system? Because I think they had trouble with that with an app trying to make that happen, so it sort of failed. Um, is that money for? I, I believe it's signage, Lorna might know, because I know um, Jesse Mashwick's been working with emergency management to help with the one thing, 133,000, is it for us to be alerting system or signage? Or? Uh, you don't know, apologies, I'm pretty sure it's fine. 
Okay. Okay. Thanks. There's no need to be on Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So that the cold of this because ink doesn't work. So um, um, oh, sorry, you know, I've got a question, but you don't look. Um, if you've got at the when we had the hearing for this agendas, um, the because it submitted uh, submitted on the Karanga Valley uh, Trail. Extent yeah. going all the way up to the visitor centre and what have you. Our community board chair was in that submission and then subsequently requested that the community board be brought up to speed with that, that thing. We um, at the community board last week were, we as councillors on the board, were um, requested very strongly to, um, uh, to seek for. Funding to to do that now. I'm, it's probably not happy. So, oh, yes. yeah. so, so therefore, my question is, how do we how do we get some funding allocated for that? Yeah, I'll be explaining. Yeah. Um, just on page thirty one, that is noted in the agenda. Um, in the last NCP, there was fifty thousand concluded. So some work has been progressed progressing around investigations, um, but. Start the advice is that you know further new projects are outside of the scope of the current annual plan. Um, but start continuing to work with the advocacy group, and it would be a part of an LTP consideration. That's it, just as a synopsis of what's in the report. Yes, I read that. What's the status of that? Um, it's been spent, but it actually doesn't majority. get excluded. Uh, no, uh, the majority of that fifty was was spent. Uh, 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 I believe. Uh, just one quick question, Bruce. So if you will list um, the likes of that, I've used the Chromium bypass. It's a half million dollars or something there for a brief that now. Nothing, so that's fine. Um, but it does stay, it stays in the LTP for, it's just been pushed out. It hasn't just been wiped out. Yeah, so it's a bit of a End of the barrel, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's fine. We're, yeah, we're working hard on the across it. To make sure you don't lose any project along the way, so yeah, okay. And I'll tell you, we'll cover on the slide for the rail up on the white door. Yes, please. Appreciate it. Well, I'll get to keep your mind that's right. So, just for clarity, COVID um, is in there as a capex at 7 million, even though it's outside the funding. So the funding comes into the other uh, income, but it's got to be in there. Yeah. It's a capital project, we're creating a sense that we're going to have a great same time. Appreciate it. Just, just one little category there. So the likes of um, Fongmata, Midku, is that, is that roading? So there's the district roading. Community the, roading. That's community roading. It's just nice and Tokra Valley. Um, yeah. Part of both. Ah, there has a bit of both in there. Yeah, I think we come back to these. Okay. We'll do a, yeah, we we'll 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 Got a list that we could work on after lunch and we'll freight for lunch. Yeah, and it's not a big list. Don't and not leave have lunch as well. We need to before we do break for lunch. I'd just like to introduce um, Lynette and Karen. So Lynette is our management accountant. So she has done all the work in the background on building the budgets um, and doing all the stuff the operational budgets, giving you against these numbers for you. Um, she's the one that's done all that with Karen. And hey, please, Lord. And, 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 and some of it. Just take a look at Just so that you know, there's a lot. It's, there's a lot that's going on in the background, and plus also um, Artia, who's not here. 
she's the one that's inputting everything. So she's she's doing an awful lot of work in the background. So I would like to acknowledge her as well. Yeah. And Karen has um, done a fabulous job on all the capex changes. So every time there's a change, or every time Bruce takes a line to the capex program, uh, it creates a whole lot of work for Karen. So <laughs> I just just want to acknowledge and acknowledge both yeah. of them and the amount of work that that they have put in, the hours they've put in to get us. The way we are. Thanks. Yeah. body is sorry. Very little. If you're hearing us, we're going to take a break and we'll be back at one day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.